Well, good morning, everybody. Can we worship the Lord together? For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, and thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Can we dwell together in this presence this morning as we sing about this goodness? Hallelujah. We worship you and bless your name. Yes. So wonderful you are. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you like. And I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night when you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm, I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers far and wide and I know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father that's who you are. Come on, let's say that. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. You are a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am, that's who I am, that's who I am, cause you are perfect in all of your ways, you are perfect in all of your ways, you are perfect in all of your ways, to us, yes you are perfect in all I'm perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Oh, your love so undeniable. I can hardly speak in peace. So unexplainable I can I can hardly think cause you call me deeper still yes you call me deeper still yes you call me deeper still into love 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 you're a good good father who you are come on say it who you are, that's who you are, that's who you are, and I'm loved by you. That's who I am, hallelujah. Who I am, that's who I am. You're a good, good father. That's who you are, that's who you are, that's who you are, and I'm loved by you. That's who I am, just testify. That's who I am. That's who I am. Can we sing together? You are perfect in all of your ways. You 
are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Isn't this your testimony? You're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Come on, can we say that again, church? You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You're a good, good father. Say, this who you are. This who you are. This who you are. And I'm loved by you. This who I am. It's who I am, it's who I am, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, come on, it's who I am, can we say that? It's who I am, here's why you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. From your heart say, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You're my good, good father. Say who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. No matter what it looks like, you're my good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. No matter how I feel, that's who you are. And I'm loved. This is the truth. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. We worship you, our good, wonderful, gracious, Heavenly Father, bless you, Lord. You're so worthy to be praised and adored. Thank you for your presence in this place. Your glory among us. Thank you, Lord. You who inhabits the praises of your people. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you, Jesus. Wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, you are Hallelujah. perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your Oh, 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 you are perfect in all of your ways. 
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this time of sharing. We believe that as your word comes forth, it's going to come forth with clarity and accuracy of the Holy Spirit. We say that hearers have ears to hear and hearts to receive what you would say on today. Yes, Father, let what we say on today exalt the Savior, edify the saints, and evangelize the sinners. You be lifted high, Lord, in Jesus' name. One more time, you are perfect. All of your ways. Isn't he perfect? You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Hallelujah. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of to us you're a good good father that's who you are that's who you are that's who you are ain't none loved by you that's who I am that's who I am that's who I am thank you Pastor CJ Thank you, our musicians, Minister Chuck Chuck, Minister Joshua. We give a shout out to all of our great help. Our media group, Elder Larry, Nehemiah, Ty Rich. God bless all of you. We just appreciate everybody on today. You who are here, you may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Such an awesome presence in here. Glory to God. 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 We want to continue to abide by the CDC's guidelines. Let's continue to love on one another. Let's continue to stay in contact with one another via phone or Zoom, whatever, and still keep your social distancing. Let's continue to encourage one another in the most holy faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to get right into the word. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 18, 20, and 21, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. We love life, so we're going to speak life. Hallelujah. You who don't know what we call this affirmation of faith, you can look at the screens and say it along with me. Get your Bibles, your technological devices, whatever is contained in the Word. Lift it in the air. Let's confess together. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. Today I will receive the infallible, the incorruptible, the indestructible Word of God. I boldly confess that my mind is alert. My ears are open. My heart is receptive to these glorious truths. When I leave on today, I will not be the same because the word of God shall exalt me above every challenge that may come my way. I boldly confess that I have the victory and I walk in that victory. Hallelujah. Let's bless the Lord for the victory. And you at home, bless the Lord for the victory, the victory that's in Christ Jesus, our Savior, forever. Well, I sense that we're over the hump with this coronavirus thing. I can see some light at the end of the tunnel. 
Hallelujah. I don't feel that it will be long now before we can all gather together in God's house and have us a good time. Psalm 84 says, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O God. That is how lovely, how endearing, how awesome are your tabernacles, your courts, O God. Hallelujah. Your provision even. Well, turn with me to Zechariah, the ninth chapter. Zechariah chapter 9. Wednesday night, we resumed our Courage in a Crisis series after heaven interrupted it for the resurrection story. Our Wednesday night recharge lesson was subtitled, Hope for the Hurting. Today, we'll continue to look at the subject of hope in a message that I've been wanting to minister, I guess, for at least a year. It's been in my spirit, although I hadn't put it together for at least a year. Now I sense it's the time to share it. It is entitled, Prisoners of Hope. Prisoners of Hope. Hallelujah. I can hardly wait to get to it, but before we do, uh, there's something humorous I'd like to share with you. It goes, there's a story of this guy who was walking through the graveyard in the dark of night when he fell into an open grave that had been recently dug, awaiting a body to be placed in, the follow, in, the, in it the following day. He jumped up trying for over an hour to get out, struggling and clogging to lay hold of the sod to climb out, but he couldn't. So he decided to just go to sleep and wait for somebody to get him out the next day. After a while, he heard a thud. Somebody else had fallen into the same grave. That guy started jumping up and down, struggling to get out also, when he heard a voice say, no need of trying to get out, buddy. He did. He did. All right. <laughs> when things get difficult, it's easy to want to give up. All nature shows us that we follow the path of least resistance. Water does, and so does the root system, and so does mankind. It's easy to get down and discouraged. But that's not God's plan for us. Hallelujah. God wants us to be full of hope. So full of expectancy just that we just can't help believing for the best. You just can't help it. You can't help it. He wants us to be prisoners of hope. When you're a prisoner of something, it's like you're chained to it. In other words, you just can't get away from it. Can't get away. Can't get away. I know people that are prisoners of fear. Some people are prisoners of worry. Others are prisoners of doubt. Some are prisoners of lust. You've heard them say, nothing good ever happens to me. It's never going to change. Or it's been too long. No. You're chained to the wrong thing. You need to break those chains and become a prisoner of hope. That means that no matter how long it's taken, no matter how impossible it looks, our attitude should be, I just can't help it. I know it's going to work out. I know it's going to get better. I know I'm going to overcome. It may be taking a long time, but I know this too shall pass. It may be difficult, but I know that means I'm closer to my victory because I'm a prisoner of hope. Prisoner of hope. Prisoner of hope. Our delivery has three power points, major power points with subsequent minor points on today. The first one is the people of hope. The people of hope. So do you have Zechariah, the ninth chapter? I want to read just two verses 
out of the King James Version. Then I'll share out of the message translation a little later. Zechariah, the ninth chapter, verses 11 and 12, they read out of the King James Version, As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The grass withers, the flower thereof, face falls away. But the word of our God endures forever. And this is the word which is preached unto you by the gospel. Although it was spoken to Israel thousands of years ago, this passage is for us. It's for the church today. Early in Zechariah, the ninth chapter, it is speaking to Jerusalem and Zion, which speak of the church of today. The prophet Zechariah draws a marvelous image. He calls God's people prisoners of hope. Prisoners of hope of the fulfillment of the promises of God. Prisoners of hope in contrast to prisoners of despair who have no future. There are a lot of things you can be imprisoned to. Again, you can be imprisoned to your fears. It starts telling you what you can and cannot do. You can be imprisoned to anger. Anger will try to control you. And anything that is controlling you, you are a prisoner of. Pills will try to control you. Depression will try to control you. Addictions will try to control you. But that's not the kind of prisoners we are. Hallelujah. Our God has declared us free. For he whom the Son makes free is free indeed. The chains fell off. I said the chains fell off when he saved us. So as Christians, we are such prisoners of hope. That is, we're transforming our trials, tribulations, troubles, temptations by trusting God in the promise of God to deliver us. Our hope is in Jesus. Glory to God. Our hope is focused on Jesus. You know, I used to love what Oral Roberts used to say some time ago, and um, he made it into a theme song of his show. And I remember another apostle, Apostle Johnny Washington, his choir would come on uh, the air singing this song. Uh, but Oral Roberts would say, something good is going to happen to you today. And so it made out, they made it a song, something good is going to happen to you, happen to you this very day. Something good is going to happen to you. Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. That's being a prisoner of hope. Every day waking up saying something good is going to happen to me today. Something good is going to happen to me today. Hallelujah. So our first amount of thought is a people delivered by grace. Colossians, the first chapter says, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We've been delivered by grace. If there is anything you want to be a prisoner of, it's a prisoner of hope. I don't want to be a prisoner in Folsom State. I don't want to be a prisoner in Sing Sing. I don't want to be a prisoner in San Quentin. I don't want to be a prisoner in Attica. But I do want to be a prisoner of hope. Hope is a prison I will gladly walk into. Shackle my feet and shackle my ankles to hope. Hallelujah. God's hope is a fortress in which we find ourselves surrounded by an unshakable confidence in his coming to set things right. We're surrounded by an unshakable confidence that he is going to see us through. This means no matter what we're facing, 
God walks us through the most difficult places and circumstances to ultimately bring us into the life we were made for. The Bible tells us of many times uh, where people, when they encountered Jesus and he touched their lives, wanted to stay with him and follow him. And that's understandably so. But he sent them home, back to everyday life, to live out and share with others what he'd done. They held on to what he had done for them. And because of what the Lord has done for me, and I'm holding on to what he's done, I'm a prisoner of hope. Just like those people didn't want to let Jesus go after Jesus had transformed their lives, they wanted to follow him. Well, I don't want to let Jesus go, and I will not let him go, and I'm following him, and that makes me a prisoner of hope. Hallelujah. I know he's not through being good to me. I know he's not through blessing me. I know he's not through smiling upon me. I know he's not through healing me. I know he's not through delivering me. I know he's not through making a way for me. Hallelujah. I know he's not through giving me more joy. I know he's not through giving me more love. I'm a prisoner of hope. Thank you, Jesus. He's not through. He's not through. He's not through. Blessing me. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is not through blessing me. Zacharias prophesying to the free Babylonian captivities upon their return home to Judah. Returning home was an anticlimactic uh, event for these captives. Even though they were free from Babylon captivity, they were now subjects to a, a political regime, the Persian Empire. And in spite of Persians' might, there was no guarantee of security. At any moment, the Jews could be taken back into captivity. But Zechariah's words then to them is, stay bound to hope. Don't lose your hope. Stay with believing that God is going to bring a favorable outcome. You see, hope is expectation, but it's more than expectation because despair can be expectation. Anxiety can be expectation. Worry can be expectation. Worry, anxiety, and despair, despair, they are negative expectations. They are unfavorable expectations. But hope is favorable expectation. Hope is a positive expectation. Hope is believing that things are going to get better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is it? Proverbs, the fourth chapter, I believe verse 18 says, for the path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. That means that it's getting better and better and better and better and better with the child of God. Can you say better? Better. So a delivery, a people delivered by grace and also a people destined for glory. Zechariah comes to the people with words of encouragement. He declares that the Lord will come and encamp among them in Zion. Return to the stronghold. They once were at the stronghold because you can't return to a place where you've never been any more than you can tell what you don't know or give what you don't have. Hallelujah. Well, what is the stronghold they are to return to? Look at what Zechariah, the ninth chapter, verses 11 and 12 say in the New International Version. They say, well, verse 12 says in the New International Version. It says, return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will re restore twice as much to you. Well, the New Living Translation calls the stronghold the place of safety. This stronghold is Jerusalem the place of their former 
glory. Now listen to what the message translation says of Zechariah, the ninth chapter, verses 11 and 12. Uh, they say, and you, because of my blood covenant with you, I'll release your prisoners from their hopeless sails. Come home, hope-filled prisoners. This very day, I'm declaring a double bonus. Everything you lost, return twice over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is anybody in here, is there anybody in here who has a blood covenant with the Lord? Is anybody covered by the blood? Has Jesus washed anybody by the blood? Well, you qualify as being a prisoner. The Lord says, I'm talking to you. He says, I want you to come home. Come home to the place where there's prosperity. Come home to the place where there's a favorable expectation. Come home. Hallelujah. To the blessings of your God. Glory to God. Glory to God. In this translation, home is the stronghold Jerusalem or Zion. Hallelujah. So it's a people delivered by grace and a people destined for glory. Let's look at our second PowerPoint. Our second PowerPoint is the power of hope. The power of hope. Some people live their life by this philosophy. Well, if you don't expect anything good to happen, you won't be disappointed when it doesn't. Your feelings about past experiences may contribute to, may contribute to you thinking this way. But that's a very negative outlook on life. And that will make you a negative person. The Lord wants you a prisoner of hope. Hallelujah. So the first of three minor thoughts under the power of hope is hope causes us to be stable. Hope causes us to be stable. Prisoners of hope know no other response than to keep hoping. Hallelujah. Let me not be wavering in my hope. Hope is not something he has today, but it's gone tomorrow. Prisoners of hope are not hopeful today and hopeless tomorrow. You're not a prisoner if the very least you were just an inmate. But we're talking about prisoners. And in case you don't know the difference between an inmate and a prisoner is an inmate just in there for a day or so. A prisoner is in there. In Scotch in there. So they don't say, I was hoping I'd feel better tomorrow, but I don't. I was hoping that I wouldn't lose my job, but I was laid off. Those people were putting their hope in how they feel and putting their hope in their job. Don't put your hope in those places. A prisoner of hope has learned to put his hope in God. He says, I lost my job, so God must have a better job for me. He says, I don't feel good today. I'll probably feel great tomorrow. That's a prisoner of hope. When my reality doesn't equal God's promises, I know my life is about to get better. I say when my reality doesn't equal God's promises, I know that my life is about to get better. And whatever I go through, I know that there is twice on the other side. I, I don't have time to touch this yet, and I don't know if we'll touch it today, but notice the last words of this Isaiah, uh, Zechariah 9 and 12, for you shall receive double for your trouble. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if I lose my job, that means that I'm going to get a doubly better job. If I don't feel good today, I'm going to feel doubly better on tomorrow. I'm not hopeless. I'm a prisoner of hope. 
I'm not wavering in hope. Hope doesn't come to me today and then leaves me tomorrow. Prisoners of hope are shackled to hope. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. They just keep on hoping. Circumstances come and say, aren't you down now? Aren't you discouraged? Aren't you defeated? No, man. I just keep on hoping. I don't know better than to keep on hoping. My desire is that when you finish watch, watching me today, that you will be locked up in the prison of hope. A prisoner has resigned himself to the sentencing of the judge. Our judge is Father God. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the ending. The first and the last has spoken a sentence over us. His sentence says, not guilty. His sentence says, righteous. His sentence says, you're the redeemed of the Lord. His sentence says, whatsoever you bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. His sentence says, you can call those things that be not as though they were. Hallelujah. Now, now let, me, let me park here a minute. Let me park here a minute with this calling things that be not as though they were. Romans 4 and 17 says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. This scripture is saying that God calls those things which be not as though they were. But through implication, through, through extension of the scriptures, it shows that we are to do so also. Hallelujah. You see, Joel says, let the weak say I'm strong. You saying you're strong, you're calling those things which be not as though they were. When Peter and John went to the temple to pray, being the ninth hour, and they saw a lame man at the gate of beautiful, lame from birth. They said, silver and gold have we none, but such as we have, give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. They were calling forth healing in his ankle. Though it was not, they were calling it forth. Hallelujah. In Acts the 13th chapter, uh, Paul was, was witnessing to Sergius Paulus, who was a government official. And there was Elymas, the sorcerer, beside him, his, his counselor. And when Paul was witnessing to him and he was listening, Elymas, the sorcerer, tried to uh, come against what Paul was saying. And Paul told him, I believe it's verse 11, I'm not sure, third, Acts the 13th chapter. Anyway, Paul told him, he said, you're not going to be able to see for a season because you have withstood the word of God. What was Paul calling forth? His eyes being closed. His eyes weren't closed, but he was calling those things which be not as though they were. Hallelujah. Can I, can I share one more? I can't spend too much time here, but and then we're going to look at the, in the natural. Uh, Jesus taught us in Mark 11 chapter. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. When you believe it, that means that you don't see it. So you're calling it forth. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. You see, sometimes we just consider it in the natural. In the natural, we call forth those things which be not as though they were. When our children are outside playing and we don't see them, we're calling them. CJ, the Bible, we're calling forth those things that be not as though they were. When you're on the elevator, on the first floor, you don't push the first 
throw a button because you just stay there. But you want to call forth those things that be not. You're not on the second floor. You're not on the third floor. Or you're not on the fourth floor, wherever you want to go. And so when you hit the button, you're calling forth those things that be not. Hallelujah. Can I tell, share one more example? In your homes, if it's cold, if it's 55 degrees, you go to that thermostat. It says 55. You turn it on to 72. It's not 72, but you want it at 72. So you're calling those things which be not as though they were. Hallelujah. God has spoken a sentence over us. His sentence says, I'm the head and not the tail. His sentence says, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come and I'm blessed when I go. His sentence says, my cattle is blessed. Or we can say it today, my bank account is blessed. My CD is blessed. My 401k is blessed. Hallelujah. My investments are blessed. Blessed when I come and blessed when I go. Thank you, Lord. We've got to resign ourselves fully to the sentencing of our judge. Yes, God. Sentence me, Lord. Because I know the thoughts that he has for me. I know the plans that he's got for me. Plans to prosper me. To give me a future and a hope. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And it's not based on our works. But it's it's based on the works of Jesus Christ. Prisoners of hope. We are to be rooted and grounded in what we believe and hold true. We are to be seated firmly in our personal convictions. The bottom line is this. If we have no hope, we might waver in our faith and wander off after things that don't matter. When our hope is real, it causes us to be stable in our faith and our walk. Prisoners of hope. So hope causes us to be stable. Not only does hope cause us to be stable, but hope counsels us to be stubborn. To be stubborn. My mother used to always call me stubborn. But <laughs> okay. But there are many times when stubbornness is not appropriate. But in the Lord's work, a good dose of bullheadedness is perfectly in order. There was a time when stubbornness paid off being raised in the housing project. Uh, We would be outside and with a bunch of guys. And some of the guys uh, didn't have any uh, sense of right and wrong. And you see, I was raised in church. I knew what the Ten Commandments said even though I hadn't given my life to the Lord. And so some of the guys, they said, let's go and hit somebody in the head. They were hitting people in the head in the housing project and stealing men, particularly money. And uh, those guys were bad. But you see, I had to have somebody to hang out with. And so I was out there on the corner with them. And then I said, I risk, I risk my life. <laughs> or at least a tooth or a limb. But I said, I'm not going. I'm not going. So it pays to be stubborn. In some cases, it pays to be stubborn. I was stubborn. I said, I'm not going. I knew some of them would try to fight me and they probably would have beat me. And not just one, the rest of them might would have wanted to jump on me too because I broke the pack. But it pays to be stubborn sometimes. When you get in an uncompromising position, young girl, with that young boy, after he done 
wine and dine you, so to speak. We know you weren't eat, drinking wine, but you know the colloquial. And then uh, you go to the movies, and, and then uh, you're on a row by yourself, and he want to, his, his hands want to get active on you. You've got to be stubborn. You've got to say, hey, what you doing? So sometimes stubbornness pays. Hope counsels us to be stubborn. We must allow nothing to move us from our steadfastness. If your hope is set on getting fit, you'll join that gym and exercise stubbornly. If you're dreaming about going on a tropical vacation, you'll stubbornly cut back on eating out or buying new clothes in order to save up. If you're pursuing a romantic relationship, you might start dressing differently and investing in some cologne. In other words, I hope for the future forms you in the present. Look at what Romans, the 12th chapter, and verse 12 says. It says, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Rejoicing in what? Hope. Hallelujah. Rejoicing in hope. I'm always full of hope. I'm a prisoner of hope. I'm locked up behind the bars of hope. And I don't want to be released. Do we have any other prisoners of hope in this place? To rejoice in hope is good advice. Especially in times when it feels like you've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for something to happen in our lives. Hope is vital in times like these. Oh, I got the hasten on, don't I? Um, hope causes us to be stable. Hope counsels us to be stubborn. And see, hope challenges us to be strong. Hope releases the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Psalm 62. Look at what the 62nd division of Psalm says. Psalm 62, just one verse, verse 5. It says, my soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. The word translated expectation, if you would search a lexicon or a Strong's Inexhaustive uh, Dictionary, you'll find is hope. In 62 other instance, instances, it's the same word that's translated hope. So why did I bring you here? Because we can read it this way. My soul wait thou only upon God, for my hope is from him. Notice it says from him. My hope is from him. Not in him. Although in him applies to us too. But it says here that my hope is from him. In other words, he's the one that locked me up. <laughs> he's the one that put me in the bars of hope. He's the one that keeps me hoping. Hallelujah. Our hope comes from the Lord. When you get your hope from God, it won't fail. When you get your hope from God, it will not fail. Whatever you need to not fail, you better get it from God first. If you get it from God, it won't fail. We'll be strong in hope. When you get it from the Lord, you're not drumming up on your own hope. Your hope, your own hope will fail. But you're calling on the hope that is already in you, that God gave you. Colossians 1 and 27 says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The only way that you cannot be a prisoner of hope if you're born again is to listen incessantly to the pundits, is to listen unceasingly to the news. 
otherwise, you automatically have hope. Because Christ in you is the hope of glory. There's something in you that will cause you to hope. There's something in you that will cause you to believe for better. Hallelujah. Is this blessing anybody on today? Are you glad you're saved? Hallelujah. That hope is firm and secure. Romans 15 and 13 says, Now the God of hope, he's a God of hope. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. God's kind of hope makes you solid, strong in the Lord. So hope causes us to be stable. Hope counsels us to be stubborn. And hope challenges us to be strong. We're prisoners of hope. My last PowerPoint. And because this is my last PowerPoint, let me review the first two. The people of hope, the power of hope, and now the promise of hope. The promise of hope. If all you see is all there is, then we will have a real reason to be in despair. But all you see is not all there is. Too many people have made a permanent decision over a temporary condition. Don't ever make a permanent decision over a temporary condition. Things change. Things don't have to remain the same. There is hope for those who have their faith in Christ. Because if all you see is all you see, you don't see all there is to see. Hallelujah. Suppose I had given up when we first started the church. Somebody uh, mentioned last week, they said, wow, you're preaching like the church was full. Well, you see, they don't understand. I started preaching with two or three. I cut my teeth on preaching with two or three. Literally. After our church was dedicated, we had three people in service that Wednesday night. Me, myself, and I. No, no. <laughs> no, it was my wife, her mother, and me. That was it. And Pastor CJ was in the oven. <laughs> he was about to be delivered. Glory to God. Notice what this hope promises to the people of the Lord. Our hope gives us confidence. We're going to see stuff that's troubling. We're going to hear things that are scary. But when you put the promise between you and the problem, you'll be confident. You'll boldly speak what God says. The promise will interrupt what the enemy is trying to say. Hallelujah. The promise will interrupt the message of the world. You look at your bank account. Before you make a mistake with your mouth, put the promise right in front of it and say, Jesus became poor that we through his poverty might be rich. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord it make it rich. And he has no sorrow to it. Put the promise between you and the problem. There's my promise. I'm going to put that promise right there between me and my problem so that I don't start speaking nonsense and undo what God wants to do. When the doctor's test come to you and have bad news on it, put the promise right there 
and say, no, no, no. I don't receive what the test say. I don't receive it. I receive what the finished work of Christ says, who his own self bear in his own body my sins, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. That's what I'm going to say about it. That's what I'm going to say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This, this isn't my last minor point, but can I tell my story now? Because my time is running out. Can I tell my story? Hope gives us confidence. And if I were to share my last point, it would be our hope gives us consolation. But I'm going to tell my story now. Uh, there's this feature on the cell phone called AirDrop. Honey, can you throw me your phone? There's this feature on the, on the cell phone called AirDrop. Some of you might be familiar with it. It's at least on iPhone. If you have an iPhone, you're probably familiar with it. And uh, what it does is it allows you to share your picture with your contacts or whoever you want to see your pictures. And so you find your picture that you want to share on the phone. And you go to AirDrop. And you hit AirDrop, you find the contact. You hit AirDrop, and then when you see that your AirDrop is on, you hit, you hit AirDrop, the picture, and your picture goes to that phone automatically. But they don't have to receive it. It, it. it gives you the option of decline or accept. Well, the devil does that. He'll try to paint the worst case scenario. He'll try to show you the worst that it is. He'll try to show you dying from coronavirus. He'll try to show you your whole family dying. He'll try to show you that nobody's going to be able to see you. He'll try to paint the worst case scenario. He'll try to paint that you're going to be laid off your job and that you'll never find another job. He'll try to paint the scenario that you and your family are going to go hungry. He'll try to paint the scenario of that you're going to lose your car. But the devil is a liar. So when the devil tries to airdrop that to you, hit decline. I don't receive it. Hallelujah. I said I don't receive it. My mind is trying to show me the picture, but I don't receive it. And it'll go back to his sinner because he's a liar and the father of lies. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But you know, God uses airdrops too. God's word will show you a picture. He'll show you healed and not sick. He'll show you prospering and not going broke. He'll show you your family serving the Lord. He'll show you your children serving the Lord. He'll show you your son preaching. Glory to God. He'll show you being the head and not the tail. He'll show you being in front and not behind. Ah! He'll show you above and not beneath. You have the decision. Are you going to decline or accept? I'm going to hit that accept button. I receive what God has. I am what God says I am. I have what God says I have. And I can do what God I can do what he said that I can do. Yes. Yeah. I am an overcomer. I am a victor. I am a winner. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We haven't even touched. You shall receive double for your trouble. But when Job prayed for his friend, this is how God works. He wants to give you double for what you're going through. When this is over, 
the churches are going to grow when this is over the church is going to be stronger when this is over people will be more joyful in serving the Lord yeah he's going to give us double double if you've had heartache and pain he's going to turn it around and give you a double dose of joy and happiness. Glory to God. He'll double the quality of your life. Yes, he is. He's a God of addition and multiplication. For the thief came not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Glory to God. Let's bless the Lord. Let's bless the Lord. Prisoners. Prisoners of hope. Prisoners of hope. Prisoners of hope. Hallelujah. There's this story of two 10-year-old twins. One of them was a pessimist. And the other was an optimist. The pessimist's name was Tom. And the optimist's name was Tim. Well, Tom and Tim's dad said, Tom is be believing the worst in everybody. I've got to do something to change his perspective of life. Tim, on the other hand, saw the good in everything. He was a prisoner of hope. And so the father said, I've got to bring Tom's expectation up. And I got to bring Tim's expectation down. So this is what I'll do. I'll give Tom all the toys that a 10-year-old boy could ever want. And I'll put in Tim's room nothing but hay. And so he did that on their 10th birthday. So he heard something. He heard Tom crying in the room with all the toys. He went in and said, Tom, what's wrong? I've given you all the toys that a 10-year-old boy could ever want. Uh -huh. He said, I know, Dad. But as soon as I play with these toys, they're going to break. Then, after he said that, he heard Tim laughing in the other room. He said, wait a minute, this is not going the way I planned it to go. So he went in Tim's room. And he said, Tim, what are you laughing about? I gave Tom all the toys, all the, the bicycle that you could want, the big wheel that a 10-year-old would ever want. I gave him everything that a 10-year-old would ever want, the basketball, the football, everything. And all you got is hay. What are you doing laughing? He said, Dad, I know. But with all this hay, there got to be a pony here somewhere. Got to be a pony here somewhere. So whatever the devil tries to bring my way, I say there's got to be a pony around here. Somewhere. Somebody hurts me. I look around and say there's got to be a pony around here somewhere. Sickness tries to get on my body. There's got to be a pony around here somewhere. If I have financial difficulty, there's got to be a pony around here somewhere. Hallelujah. Prisoner of hope. Prisoner of hope. I had people tell me, you see the good in everything, don't you? Hallelujah. Yes, I do. Because I'm a prisoner of hope. Glory to God. And the ultimate hope is being with Jesus one day. That blessed hope. Glory to God. Can we pray? Father, we bless you on today. We praise your holy name. We thank you for the words spoken to us today. You are a good father. Yes, you are. You're perfect in all your ways. Perfect in all your ways. So, Father, we Thank you for the seed of the word that was sown on today. We believe that it has fallen in good ground. Father, we pray for those who, who are watching 
and listening who may not know you as their savior, as their bailiff, the one who threw them into the bars of hope. We pray for them, Father. So if there's anyone who's, who's lost, and you want to be saved, you want to become a prisoner of hope and not a prisoner of addictions, and not a prisoner of fear, and not a prisoner of worry, and not a prisoner of anxiety, pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, forgive me of my sins. I receive Jesus now into my heart. I believe that he came into the world, born of a virgin, suffered, bled, and died, was buried, and rose again from the dead, and is now seated on the right hand of the Father. So forgive me of all my sins. I receive Jesus now as my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. On the basis of that prayer, we believe you were born again. We rejoice with you. Hallelujah. And because, because this is the sixth week that we weren't able to have it in churches, uh, uh, church services, uh, we haven't been taking in any, any new members. So if there's anyone who's watching and you want to be a part of New Life Worship Center, <laughs> then you can, you can just make that note or type it in or call the church next week. Amen. And we'll talk with you. Amen. And just love on you. And have you a part of this family here at New Life Worship Center. Glory to God. Where's offering time? Glory to God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Offering time. We put our hands together here at New Life when it's offering time, doing our regular service. We have a, a few here. We're, we're almost maxing out the limit here. Uh, but, but when people want to come, <laughs> it's hard to say no. Uh, amen. But we... we, we want to keep it to a maximum of 10 people. And so you see on the screen now the six different ways to give. Uh, we trust that one of those ways you will use to sow into this ministry. And when you do so, you're sowing into your own life. Hallelujah. Malachi 3 and 6 says, or what Malachi 3 and 8 says, uh, ask, will a man rob God? Where did have you robbed me? In tithes and offerings. He says, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse and prove him here with, saith the Lord, if you will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And, and, and no virus, no shutdown, no anything can stop God's favor flow in your life if you operate it. I know some people are saying, a bishop, you're, you're asking for money during a time like this. This is when you should really see to be sure you have, uh, ensure money coming in. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And if you, if you are a tither and you don't have a church home, then you can tithe into this ministry. And if you do have a church home, then your tithes belong to your local church. You can give an offering to this ministry, but your tithes belong to your local church. All right. Thank you for joining us today. We believe that you were blessed by the message, prisoners of hope. The glory of the Lord is still in this place. Hallelujah. From the opening, when Pastor CJ opened us up with Good Father. And even until now, he's here. We pray that he's in your home through these airways as well. So you can live stream us every Sunday at 11, 11 a.m. And every Wednesday night at 7.30. Uh, you can like us or follow us on Facebook uh, to receive notifications of when we 
uh, streaming. We're also on Instagram on Wednesday nights, and uh, we have a prayer number or a conference call you can make, and you can also watch us on YouTube for those of you who, who aren't a part of Facebook. There are several ways you can get this message, and by all means, if you don't have our New Life VA app, this is our own church app, then download that. It's free. It'll keep you abreast of everything that happens here at the church. All right. Again, so glad to have had this time to share with you today. Until next time, come, receive the word, leave, and experience the difference at New Life. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am.